is Wild Encounters with the BC Wildlife Park. My name is Brayman and today we're talking about tortoises. Uh, so this is Morty, the red-footed tortoise, and the scientific name is Kelanoides carbonaria. Uh, so the Kelanoides part is actually the ancient Greek word for turtle or tortoise, uh, while the carbonaria actually means coal-like, which refers to dark coal with glowing red patches. So you can see how he gets both of his names from those red spots at the bottom of his feet. It's very similar to another tortoise uh, with yellow markings at the bottom of its feet, and I'll give you three guesses what we call that tortoise. If you guessed yellow-footed tortoise, you're absolutely right. So a lot of people ask us, what is the difference between a turtle and a tortoise? Well, first of all, a uh, tortoise is actually a type of turtle. Uh, they just have different enough features that we're able to distinguish and be more specific when we talk about them. So a good place to look for those differences is actually on the feet. Uh, turtles have adapted more for life in the water. When you look at a turtle's feet, uh, you'll see they'll have webbed feet or even flippers in the case of sea turtles. While tortoises spend pretty much all of their time on land. So when you look at Morty, you can see he has more club-like front feet and more elephantine back feet. Now let's check out his shell. So the top of a tortoise's shell is called the carapace, and the specialized scales that make it up are called scutes. On the red-footed tortoise, each of those scutes contains a pale center called an areole. The shell is much more yellow when they're juveniles, uh, but tend to gradually get darker brown as the tortoise matures. Their shells actually also contain air chambers that make them much lighter than they look. Both the skin and shells of the tortoise are made up of what is called beta keratin. You might know keratin as the material that makes up our hair and nails. Beta keratin is similar, but has a lot more rigidity as well as waterproofing to prevent desiccation. Beta keratin is also found in the scales, beaks, and claws of birds, as well as other reptiles. And just like with turtles, a tortoise cannot actually leave its shell. Uh, they are born with their shells, the shells grow with them, and they actually are fused with the spine and rib cage. Uh, so that shell actually brings up an interesting story uh, about a famous Greek playwright by the name of Aeschylus, uh, who is said to have been killed by a falling tortoise. Uh, whether this is a true story or not is one of history's mysteries, uh, but it is true that some birds do drop turtles and tortoises uh, from tall heights to break their shells. Uh, Red-footed tortoises are far too heavy for any bird for the, to attempt this, though. This red-footed tortoise is actually native to South America. Uh, it's found in most countries there east of the Andes, with the exclusion of the easternmost Amazon basin. Uh, they can also be found in Trinidad and have been introduced by people to other islands in the Caribbean. So they can be found in rainforests, temperate forests, dry thorny forests, and savanna areas. Uh, they prefer heavily forested and humid environments, uh, but tend to avoid muddy areas due to the low burrowing capacity of those habitats. So they'll actually take shelter in abandoned burrows of armadillos and other burrowing animals, uh, as well as hollow logs, fallen trees, and densely vegetated areas. The red-footed tortoise is diurnal, meaning it's active during the day. So we've tried to simulate as best we can the heat and humidity of those environments here in his habitat at the BC Wildlife Park. So this thermometer allows us to thoroughly monitor the different temperatures of the different areas of his habitat. And this lamp ensures that it stays warm inside and gives Morty an area to bask. Tortoises are of course cold-blooded, like all reptiles, and require an external source of heat to survive. We also have a humidifier to simulate those moist tropical environments that he is adapted to. Another important thing we like to keep in mind for all animals here at the park is what we like to call enrichment. So these are things that we include in their habitats uh, that give these animals an opportunity to use their natural instincts as well as keep their minds and bodies active. So Morty here has his ramp to exercise going up and down on. He has his little window that he can look out from, from his den. And these brushes are set up to give him something to brush against. Uh, remember how the shell is a part of his body? We can actually feel those brushes as he rubs up against them. So in the wild, these tortoises tend to eat fruits during the wet season and flowers during the dry. We call animals that eat primarily fruits frugivores, and they play an important role in the ecosystem. 
So the seeds that they eat will actually be dispersed through their feces across the forest, allowing fruit trees and plants to spread across a greater area. Throughout the rest of the year, they will eat dead and living foliage, soil, stems, fungi, sand, pebbles, and even carrion. Uh, the sand and pebbles that they eat are actually believed to act as an abrasive agent that helps them to break down plant matter inside of their stomachs. Both turtles and tortoises do not have teeth, and instead their mouths have sharpened edges for biting, much like a bird's beak. Uh, so we also like to provide lots of opportunities for Morty to go on little walks around the park, just to get some sun and exercise. Uh, so if you'll just give me a second, I'll pop Morty into his Morty mobile and we'll go off to explore. So as you can see, while he's not the fastest animal in the world, he'll cover quite a bit of ground because he's pretty much just go, 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 and will only really stop when he spots something he wants to eat. Turtles and tortoises do not have ears like ours, but they can feel vibrations, and in the case of turtles, they can feel the change in water pressure as well, and both of these things tell them where food and other predators might be. They rely more on having a good sense of smell. And tortoises can actually also see color, much like us, and they've been noted for being especially attracted to red foods. So different tortoise species can actually range pretty vastly in size, with the Galapagos tortoise reaching about 2 meters in carapace length and weighing up to 400 kilograms. Uh, meanwhile, the speckled tortoise will only grow about 10 centimeters long and can only get up to about 165 grams in weight. Red-footed tortoises fall somewhere in the middle of this, uh, with males tending to be a bit bigger, reaching about 51 centimeters in carapace length, uh, and they can weigh up to 28 kilograms, which is about the weight of three and a half bowling balls. Uh, they also have longer, more distinct tails. It's believed that whether or not these animals are born male or female is determined by the ambient temperature around them while they're still in the egg. So once they reach about five years of age, they're now at sexual maturity and are ready to mate. Uh, Red-footed tortoises are actually polygynous, meaning that the males will tend to mate with more than one female at a time. Uh, when they're ready to do so, the males will produce a sort of clucking noise uh, similar to a chicken, and this is both meant to attract a potential mate as well as ward off any potential competitors. Uh, because if another male tortoise does arrive, the two will actually wrestle uh, in order to compete for mates. Uh, this typically begins with a bit of a head bobbing display, and this is followed by both of the tortoises then trying to knock each other onto the other's back. Uh, don't worry though, uh, if the tortoise does lose, it's perfectly capable of flipping itself back onto its feet once again. Under human care, uh, mating occurs throughout the year, but in the wild, nesting will generally occur between June and September, with females nesting several times throughout the year, laying about 2 to 15 eggs per clutch. Uh, tortoises don't tend to take care of their young the way we do. Uh, once the egg is buried, it's pretty much left alone, and the hatchlings will emerge as an entirely independent creatures. It's actually unknown how long these tortoises can live, but tortoises are well known for having uh, particularly long lifespans. In fact, currently the oldest known animal in the world is a Seychelles giant tortoise named Jonathan, who is 189 years old. And while we don't believe that the red-footed tortoise can get that old, uh, it's estimated that it could be up to 30, 40 years old, maybe even 50, 60 or older. Uh, Morty here was born in 2008, so we suspect he'll be with us for a long while yet. So red-footed tortoises actually have no known predators aside from humans. Uh, they're actually considered a delicacy in South America, and funnily enough, the Catholic Church considers them to be a fish. So during Holy Weeks, when meat is forbidden, uh, the tortoise is actually consumed in large numbers. Uh, so aside from being food, uh, they've also been found in the pet trade, which is actually how Morty ended up here with us. Morty here actually was a family pet, uh, but the family determined that they were no longer able to take care of him, uh, especially once they learned he could live another 30 or 40 years. So he was surrendered here to the park. And this is one of the reasons we cannot recommend strongly enough that you thoroughly research any reptile you plan on adopting as a pet. Uh, reptiles are notoriously difficult to take care of uh, just due to their different temperature and habitat requirements, as well as diet. Uh, particularly with the tortoise, diet is crucial because of the calciums and proteins they use to build their shells. Uh, so a high protein and low calcium diet can actually result in the types of bumps and peaks along their shells that shouldn't be there. Uh, they should have a much more smooth domed shell. Um, 
Um, as well, Morty has also developed some respiratory issues uh, just due to him not getting that humid environment that he requires in the past. So that's why we actually use a humidifier here to help him out. So red-footed tortoises have actually not been evaluated by the International Union for the Conservation of Nature. Uh, so it's actually unknown whether or not they're at risk. However, it is likely that their island populations are in decline just due to overhunting and habitat loss. Uh, there have also been several incidents recently where baby tortoises being illegally smuggled have been discovered in seized suitcases at airports. Um, so there was one incident in 2021 where almost 200 Galapagos tortoises were discovered in a suitcase. Uh, also in 2019, almost 1,500 baby turtles and tortoises were all discovered in an abandoned suitcase, uh, including some red-footed tortoises. So because we're all about conservation through education here at the BC Wildlife Park, uh, I do like to end on that note and encourage you that if you are looking into an exotic pet to thoroughly do your research to ensure that you can give them the best life possible, uh, as well as provide the huge commitment of time and other resources as necessary, as well as of course looking, ensuring that you buy from an ethical source. Uh, so if you want to meet Morty in person uh, or learn more about red-footed tortoises and the other animals here at the Wildlife Park, uh, please come check us out uh, in Kamloops, BC, uh, as well as check out our website at www.bcwildlife.org. Uh, we also have YouTube and Facebook pages to check out. See you there!